So in the last video, we discussed player expectation and the importance of setting up the expectations of what your players are going to come into or what you as a player are looking for in terms of dead lord with tone and genre and setting. And today, we're going to talk about live lore, but also tone and genre and setting vis-a-vis -vis. how do you do that. What's up? I'm GR, this is Playerbase, and this series of videos on how to set up expectations at the table for what kind of game you want or are looking to have is due in part to a conversation that uh, Duke Quakem had with the channel, and we are going to give Duke Quakem credit for every one of these videos. So Duke, these are for you. Here's the thing about that. Tone, setting, lore, genre, what's the difference? And also, uh, how do you impart them? Also, what do you mean by live lore and dead lore, GR? Okay, well, I said that I would talk about that today, and uh, I'm going to talk about it today. Let me give you an example. Let's say uh, your GM or DM is giving you the opportunity to play as a party of explorers who have trekked halfway through the desert um, and gotten lost from their caravan, now starved and dehydrated, they chance upon uh, an incline in a sand dune where the winds have swept open the entrance to a long forgotten tomb. All you have is a torch and your trusty like cooking knife and an incredibly dark but cool and out of the sun entryway into something that may be untold ancient and foreboding, but the only other option is to die by sunlight out here on the dunes. That's a very different adventure from you and uh, some of your best mates are constantly on the run from the intergalactic police as you run an unauthorized shipping management company out of your specked out commercial frigate throughout the galaxy from the land of talking sneakers to the planet of basketball and then also into the interdimensional danger zone of like fantasy guns that all really like shitty genre fiction. That is a very different type of adventure and the difference in them is in tone and in genre and in theme. What are those things? Genre is pretty standard in terms of what you're going to be expecting for people. You don't have to explain it too much. People usually know just by the type of game that you're running what kind of genre it's going to be. So if you're running D&D, the genre is high fantasy or low fantasy that is actually also high fantasy. You know, if you're running a game of Eclipse Phase, that's hard science fiction or medium science fiction, right? If you're running Star Wars, that's science fantasy. You know, that's basically uh, spaceships and medieval English fairy tales. It's also going to the Green Knight, really, right? Those are different genres. But within those genres, they have different tones. So like the tone of the high fantasy of The Lord of the Rings is very different than, you know, the Michael Moorcock books or the... Conan the Barbarian books, which are somewhat low fantasy, but again, it's, it's, a, it's an adjacent genre. And you could make the argument that Conan is high fantasy, it's just that you know, Conan himself doesn't use a lot of magic, because he's always fighting wizards. And then for science fiction, you know, hard science fiction, you have things like uh, Event Horizon, right? And that is fundamentally a different story from Fiasco, or, which is a book, so maybe people haven't read it, but it's a great book. Um, Solaris, or, which is another book by Lim, or A Roadside Picnic, which is immortalized in what's his name's only good film, Stalker, which is what the books are, uh, the video games are referencing. Uh, Roadside Picnic is great, by the way, in terms of a setting for uh, present day science fiction. Ugh. Anyway. That's a story for another channel. What we're talking about today, though, is the difference between these things and how to present them. So in terms of genre, you have the sense of it. And now tone, maybe you have a little bit of a sense of it, too, right? Like, 
if you're going to have to fight through or enter um, a, a, a castle that is magical, right, in an Arthurian tale, that's fundamentally a different tone than in, you know, Castlevania, where it's Dracula's castle, right? The tone is different, you know? It's a different type of, it's a different type of feel, right? Tone is the feel and, and the, the stakes and the parameters of the stakes of a story or an adventure, right? And I don't know. Let's think of two pieces of pop culture that you really like and that have different tones, okay? And these aren't necessarily the ones that you like, these aren't necessarily the ones that I like, but here's two of them. You have The Adventures in Babysitting, and which is a particular type of um, tone of a particular type of 80s genre uh, kids adventure movie, versus, I don't know, um, mm, you know, Game of Thrones, right? They have very different tones, right? 16-year-old girls have very different dangers and suffer very different fates in those two, in, in those two stories. Uh, but they're both adventures, and they're both, you know, pseudo-fantastical, pseudo-realistic in their, in their genre setting, right? You know, in Adventures in Babysitting, I forget, you know, I mean, aside from some 80s plot um, MacGuffins, like how much of the setup is that far divorced from reality, I don't exactly remember. And then in Game of Thrones, I mean, outside of the dragons and some, like, occasional magic stuff, like, most of that stuff is just about, like, England with better tailors, you know? It's just fantasy England, but, like, for real. Um, and also, like, I always think of Game of Thrones as if Jabba the Hutt authored Lord of the Rings, but that's a whole other story. Those two pieces of fiction, right, those two genres, those two tones, they have, if you just look at the, if you just look at the poster for those, for those pieces of media, you already know what the tone and the setting is and the genre, right? You can read it very easily. And, you know, if you want to make, like, on uh, a photo imaging app, if you want to make, like, a little poster for what you're presenting as almost like a vision board, that's a, an interesting way to do it. But really, just a couple of lines in a text message is enough, you know? Again, I, and I'm going to refer to the video on how to build a character really quickly. Answering that first question will answer this for you. In your head, if you're looking to present a game as a game master or dungeon master, in, or if you're looking for a particular type of game as a player, answer that first question. And then use that answer, which is just one line, 21 words, just that one line as this is what I'm looking to present, or this is what I'm looking for, something to fit this, right? You know, I remember one time I went to the New York Auto Show and I was at the Volvo exhibit. There was a little Volvo hatchback. And, but even the Volvo hatchback has, like the little, whatever the Honda Civic that the Volvo made was, it has the leg room for a man who's like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. And a dude who was like, you know, full-on Scandinavian big man style came in and looked to sit in it. Because, you know, guys who were over 6'4 have a very limited range of automobile manufacturers who built anything, and they certainly don't come out of Japan, that they can fit into, or Italy. <laughs> you know, I don't have that problem. Uh, but that is enough for the reference that I'm bringing. It's not a tangent. The point is, is that that guy already knows that there's certain things that just aren't for him. And so when he goes looking for a car, the first thing he does is he sits in and sees how far, because what he did, I saw him, I remember it very distinctly, how far back, he can get the seat, and if it has enough legroom for him, because his legs were like a meter and a half, practically, or whatever. Uh, and that's what this line is. It's just letting other people know if you're a good fit for them or if they're a good fit for you for this game, for this adventure. Not forever, necessarily, but for this. And we're going to go into live lore a bit more in the next video, but just to close this out, the difference between live lore and dead lore is that dead lore sets the expectation. It's static. Live lore is basically in-game, in-character, something that the game master or the dungeon master is telling the player that that character would know. They don't necessarily have to roll for it. So like, you know, if the character is looking to get on a ship that's going with the trade winds to the next continent and that character was a sailor, you know, the game master is with live lore able to tell the player like mid-game your player would know that like those 
you know, those barges leave at 4.30 on Tuesdays from this dock, that kind of thing. But we're going to discuss it a bit more tomorrow at the next video. And until then, I am GR, and this is Player Base, and so... <laughs>